So with that, I am going to launch into the program for today. And this program is all about financial fraud. Uh, the, the key mission for me is to make sure that I am uh, making you aware of the different kinds of frauds that exist. So the first thing I ran across when putting these slides together was, was this wonderful um, effort that, that NPR has put on, Minnesota Public Radio. And I think that this gentleman's name is Brancaccio, and he does a financial program um, on NPR. And he, he has actually put together quite a nice set of resources online um, relatively recently. So I think what's happening is there's a crescendo of awareness about this issue and people are really getting on it. And um, so I'm glad to kind of pile on because you can't overstate the importance of preventing financial fraud um, for people who are kind of most vulnerable in our community. So I'd like to show you what he had to say. I've just spent a year exploring the twilight world of older people targeted by scammers. And here's what drew me in, something small, my father-in-law is in his mid-80s. And when we visit, his phone is ringing just about every 10 minutes or so with someone trying to pick his pocket one way or another, from subscriptions and refinancing that he doesn't need to full-on lying fraudsters. Well, it turns out that one ringing phone was just the tip of a massive problem. By one estimate, people 65 and older get defrauded out of $37 billion a year. Now, Americans of all ages and all tax brackets are targeted by fraudsters, yet older people tend to lose more money and have less time to recover their financial footing. There are a lot of things at work here. People 65 and older hold an enormous amount of the household wealth in America, and scammers know that's where the money is. Many older people live alone, a risk factor in itself. But here's what really floored me. Researchers who study this say that changes in the brain as part of the normal healthy aging process might be making many seniors into softer targets for scammers. Now, I've spent a year talking to experts, including medical researchers, and met concerned family across the country and scam victims like Judy. That is $166,000 in department store gift cards she was coerced to buy and turn over to a scammer. I was nervous, but at that point I was under his spell. He said, do it, I did it. He could have told me to stand on my head in the middle of the street and I probably would have done it. I can't imagine what I was thinking. I was like a robot. We're looking into this topic in our special series, Brains and Losses, the bottom line on aging and financial vulnerability. You can check out the whole series and find resources on this topic at marketplace.org. So marketplace.org has some pretty great stuff. And I think that what he's really highlighted is something that I've talked about in other with other uh, programs over the years is this concept that that seniors are the most vulnerable and it isn't it, it it's a slow cognitive uh, um, degradation that can occur that's almost undetectable in your in your life and I I it, there there's this concept of two types of intelligences and one would be a collective kind of building or accumulation of wisdom and knowledge and experience, and that is a, that's a form of intelligence. You build that, that knowledge base. And so you can have somebody who's aging who actually is sharp when it comes to certain topics, still sharp, and has accumulated a huge amount of knowledge and, 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 um, and intellect. But at the same time, they start to potentially lose it when it comes to detecting fraud. Also, things like handling numbers, uh, uh, um, the financial calculations become a little bit blurry and a little difficult at that point. And so while you see somebody in your life who's sharp in most every way, shape, or form, then they fall for a scam that, frankly, a younger generation would look at and say, how is it possible that that person was able to fool you? Couldn't you see it? The reality is it's almost a blind spot begins to develop in certain cases. So financial fraud of seniors, the reason that seniors are targeted, I think is really what, what that video is highlighting, that there actually is a brain mechanism that begins to occur as you age in some people, too many people, 
where you lose that ability to kind of see those warning signs, see those red flags, and avoid the disaster. Um, I've seen it happen in my life, and I'll kind of highlight a couple cases as we go through the scams, where um, that, that situation is, is underway. And it, and it takes, at that point, I think, a, a level of diligence by everyone surrounding uh, these people to help them detect the frauds that are happening. So one thing I also wanted to really point out was this isn't something that isn't happening right here in our world. So whoever it is that follows the news, um, I, I'm, I, because I gave this program about three years ago, gave this talk three years ago, I, my eyes are, uh, and, the, and of course the field that I'm in, I'm very much attuned to what's going on when it comes to these kinds of things. But just doing a very quick survey very recently about, pro, about actual scams that have happened in our area, I was able to spot three of them that all happened in the last year, um, even in the last set of months. So I'll kind of show you examples. I mean, a woman was scammed out of over $400,000 from, from a person that she had met online that had moved overseas. And we'll t we'll, we'll, I'll show you a scam that, that uh, highlights that one. Um, and these, of course, what you should recognize is that these scams happen slowly at first, kind of like bankruptcy. It's slow at first, and then all of a sudden. So <coughs> the scammer begins to draw in the victim bit by bit by bit, and then it accumulates into a much larger problem before anybody really detects it. So another one was a, a grand, grandson called and asked and was said that they're in jail, and we'll go through that one as well. So that person actually paid through gift cards, which is an increasing tool for scammers to get access to your money. And then this last one was somebody who, who uh, uh, fell for the scam of the lottery scam which I don't highlight, but this one is basically, you've won the lottery, congratulations, now you need to send us some money to pay the taxes before we send you your winnings. Um, and that's a pretty classic scam as well. But this all happened right here in Traverse City and Grand Traverse County. So we are in the middle of it. We have an aging population. Our region is, is prone to having these types of scams continue. And I'm happy to say that we have resources building to be able to detect it. And, and to be completely um, honest and really point out the obvious, the senior center itself is by definition a support function to avoid these types of problems. And, and the reason is not only the awareness factor and having the staff be able to bring this to the attention of the public, but more importantly, you've built a community. It's a place where you can communicate your issues it's a place where you're sharing your, your experiences, not isolated at home. And I think that's probably the biggest way of avoiding these types of scams is to make sure that you stay connected to people who are looking out for you and people that you can lean on. And so the Senior Center implicitly is, is an is a anti-fraud tool in, in my view. Um, we're going to hold questions until the very end if you don't mind. Yep. So let me kind of go through now. I've highlighted five scams um, that, that I think are the most common. And um, the FTC has done a wonderful job of creating some videos to highlight what these scams are all about and to remind people in a short, succinct message that they need to avoid falling for these. And I think that, that while it's not me talking, they, really these, these put it in words and in vi visuals that are better than I could ever do. Um, and I will tell you, I've had people in my life fall for this first scam, which is the tech support or malware scam. Um, I've actually had clients have this issue happen. They're, they thankfully are aware enough to call a loved one. Um, and I would say, I will probably give you some tips before we watch the videos. The most important thing is to look for someone in your life that's on the list that is your tech support person. Don't rely on somebody calling on the telephone to help you. I think you need to make sure you've got a granddaughter or grandson or a son or a daughter or somebody in your life that actually can help you fix your technology problems, especially when they seem to be just popping up out of nowhere. So with that, I'm going to show you this video from the FTC on the tech support and malware scam. Scammers pose as big name companies. They call or send pop-up messages to scare you about the security of your computer. We've gotten warnings of viruses in your area. Your computer has been affected. 
first. Download this software so I can delete the dangerous program. They're good at pretending to be someone they're not because they want something that isn't theirs, your money. No matter what they say, they haven't found anything wrong with your machine. They just want you to pay for software or tech support services you don't need. If someone pressures you, slow down and think it through. Don't give out your financial information and don't let anyone take control of your computer. Report imposter scams to ftc.gov slash imposters. So this, this scam is pretty, pretty basic. I don't think I really need to elaborate too much on it. But what I will say is it, it, the, the, at the base level, what really works about this scam is that seniors, people who are older, let's say, and, and frankly, that, that um, can even be a, someone who you would kind of consider younger, Technology is changing so fast, and it, it is creating a sense of, um, uh, well, a sense of ignorance regarding the actual device that you have in your home. Very important device. It's connecting you to your grandkids. It's connecting you to your kids. It's becoming almost a, a required utility in your home, yet the technology behind it is somewhat complex, and it's a, it's a bit of a mystery. So all of a sudden, you've got something popping up on your screen, which in many ways is, a, is separating you from your community. It's separating you from the world. And somebody calls on the telephone or something pops up on your screen to call a number to help you fix your problem. You know, it is, it is preying on the vulnerability of those who are most isolated. And that's why it works. It's mysterious. We don't know how the computer actually works. We don't understand the coding. It's making you feel vulnerable and disconnected, so you fall for it. So the big takeaway on all of this is don't ever give away your financial information. Don't click on the banner ad to have somebody help you out because as soon as they get control of your computer, they've got access to things that they can then use as leverage against you and, and breed on that, on that fear and prey on that fear. So the key here is when you have a technology problem you should have on your refrigerator wall, somebody to call that you know you can trust. You know, go to the Mac store, go to Best Buy with the Geek Squad, call a grandkid, have somebody that you can rely on for technology support. Nothing off your computer popping up should ever be your tech support service. And don't ever trust a logo. So that's another rule. Just because it says Apple, just because it says Microsoft, does not mean it's Microsoft or Apple. Spoofing imposters online can make anything look legitimate. So it is a sense of paranoia, but I think it's a healthy sense of paranoia. Make sure you're talking to somebody that you know that can help you out. This next one is a growing uh, mechanism for getting money. It's called the credit card scam or the gift card scam, excuse me, the gift card scam. And it's a way in which you can, you can, they, the, the scammer can get access to your money in a relatively untrackable fashion in a way that you can't recover very easily. So they want to be sitting offshore in some faraway country. They want to get access to your money instantly, and they want to make it so that you can never get it back. Um, I had a client not fall for the gift card idea, but talking about the speed with which the money can disappear. I had a client who, um, who was, actually paid it through MoneyGram. So they had to actually go to the MoneyGram uh, office, which I believe is at Meyer, if I remember correctly, and they sent money. In the minute that that MoneyGram is sent out, it's gone. There's no recovery. And it goes off into a fake address, a fake account someplace, and it's gone. There's no way to track it. So the gift, the gift card scam is kind of built on that concept. So let's watch this one. Let's say someone calls and says he's from the IRS. He says you owe taxes and need to pay right away by getting a gift card at the store. Should you do it? No, it's a scam. Government agencies will never make you pay with a gift card. Now let's say the caller claims to be from a tech support company. He says he needs to fix a problem with your computer after you pay him with a gift card. Should you? No, that's a scam too. Real tech support companies don't work like that or make you pay with a gift card. What if you get a call from someone who says she's a relative or friend and needs money right now? She begs you to go buy her a gift card. Should you do it? No, that's also a scam. Gift cards wouldn't help real family members or friends in a real emergency. Gift cards are for gifts, 
not for payments. Anyone who tells you to pay with a gift card is a scammer. And once you've shared the gift card number and PIN, your money is probably gone. So what do you do? If you have paid with a gift card, contact the company that issued the card right away, and then tell the FTC. Reporting to the company and the FTC helps us fight these scams. Go to ftc.gov slash gift cards to learn more about how to protect yourself and others. That video uh, really was a nice setup for the different types of scams that are out there. Um, the gift card itself is the mechanism for transferring your money out of your bank account into the scammer's bank account. Um, and so it, that you have to recognize that there are easy ways to get access to money and that's why they, re they want to prey on that gift card mechanism. So we, we all know, of course, the basic rule that if someone wants you to pay them with a gift card, your radar should go way, way up. And he's right. You can't really use a gift card for everyday stuff. Um, but but uh, so that should be your first clue, that a gift card is not a way to pay somebody. So th that video actually touched on a couple of things, and I, I would kind of characterize this, this scam as called the government imposter scam. So this one is really feeding off of really one major weakness. Everybody at, I shouldn't say everybody, but the vast majority of us like to follow the rules. We are rule followers. We're law abiding citizens. At least that's the way that most of us should be. So when somebody calls you from the government, um, What's the old joke? If they call from the government and say, I'm here to help, you're, you're supposed to run, is that what it is? Well, the fact is the government's not going to call you. That's the first rule of this. But when they do call and they say they're from the IRS and that you've got a recording on that or they say they're from Social Security and they're about to um, affect your, your livelihood in terms of your, your income, you're, this is what it, uh, kind of creates that fear. And fear then creates the reaction, which is to call these people or engage with these people on the phone. So people who are, are, are imposters for the government, by definition, are really preying off of your, your rule-following behavior. So you need to be aware of that. So I'm going to show you a few different things here um, and have you listen to a cu couple of calls as examples. Then you probably have actually received these calls, these people, the people in this audience. Um, and I'm sure people watching this later on TV will recognize these calls. It, it's, um, but it's important to hear them in the context of the scam. I think people really need to hear them to kind of take away that, that immediate fear. Scam artists are pretending to be IRS officials to get your money. They'll call, email, or text you, claiming you owe back taxes or there's a problem with your tax return. They even rig caller ID to make the call look official. They play on your fears. They threaten to take your driver's license or sue arrest or deport you. They want you to pay fast. What's the truth? The truth is the IRS's first contact with you will always be a letter in the mail. It's not a phone call, email, or text message. They won't insist that you pay with a prepaid debit card, a wire transfer, or cashier's check. Now you know. Has an IRS imposter contacted you? Report it at ftc.gov slash imposters. So the important takeaway on this is we all know the government does not call to collect money if they're the IRS. They send you a letter. Never get a call. You'll never get a text. Same thing with Social Security. Um, I will tell you, I had a client fall for this. I talked about the money gram. This is what she fell for, which was, we're going to be coming to your house and arresting you because you didn't pay your taxes. My client paid their taxes. They were completely in line with the law. But the fear of being arrested and we're on our way was enough for her to react. And so she actually went to MoneyGram and sent, I don't know what it was, $1,500 and it was gone. Um, thank God it was $1,500. And I will talk to you a bit about telephone call. Some things at the end of this presentation are going to be some, some tools, some, some uh, solutions to be able to avoid these kinds of situations, and one of them has to do with these telephone calls and robocalls from fraudsters. They are sophisticated. 
So that idea that they talked about caller ID, the fact is, is that they can spoof where the telephone calls are coming from. So you can't really trust caller ID. This one I have personal, a personal story of uh, on. My, my uh, wife's grandmother was in her 90s, and she received a telephone call from uh, somebody who sounded muffled, um, a bit impaired, uh, couldn't quite hear the voice very well, but of course introduced himself as, as her, grand, her great-grandson, who was in something where, like Puerto Rico on vacation and had been injured. And that's why the person couldn't speak you know, perfectly clearly. They had bandages all over their face. And I can't get a hold of my parents and I need to have some money sent down to pay my medical bill and be able to get the flight home. Grandma, can you help me? And uh, my wife's uh, great grandmother was in a assisted, was an independent living, assisted living type facility that had a bus uh, ride to the bank, a bus ride to Walmart scheduled. So she gets onto the bus, goes to the bank for their weekly banking tr uh, bank trip, and she wires the money to this unknown person and it was about fifteen hundred dollars as well something in that range eighteen hundred dollars long gone of course it's a complete scam you know i i said this three years ago at what what i and i believe that that this is improving there, we all it, it takes a village you know to raise kids well it takes a village also to take care of our our um grandparents and great-grandparents, and I think that that kind of transcends itself into assisted living facilities and nursing homes and independent living facilities, that people are looking out for everybody. And I think that a bank teller as well should be looking out, and so should the person selling the money gram and so selling the gift card. And these are things that are starting to build where actual merchants and bank tellers are, are asking some questions. What's going on? What, you know, why are you wiring this money? And they sound somewhat intrusive at times, but they're there to protect you. So in this case, it's called the family emergency, and I'll show you this, this video that they have on this one. Granddad, it's me. I, an accident in, in Mexico. I, I'm in jail. Jimmy, is that you? Yeah, it's Jimmy. I need money for bail right now. In jail? You need to send money right now. Please don't tell anyone. Scammers are tricky and can pretend to be anybody in any situation. They seem like the real deal. They play on your fears. The goal? To get you to act fast. Check out if they really are who they say they are, even if they sound like a loved one. Heard from an imposter? Report it at ftc.gov slash imposters. So did you guys notice what he did in that video? He immediately got on his phone and he texted the parents of that grandson and the parent verified you know no jimmy's not in in mexico jimmy's with me everything's fine so that is an important thing is to always have people that you can communicate with whenever you sense that something a bit bizarre is going on um they they the the sophistication of the scammers is immense and i can tell you i believe that uh, my wife's great, great uh, grandma was was um, victimized because somebody went on to Facebook, I believe, and understood the names of everybody that she was connected with. So her profile would have shown the great grandchildren, grandson's names, the sister, the names of the parents, and so the name dropping was also utilized in that case was able to mention that my sister's not, not answering a phone and her, you know, mentioning the sister's first name. The parents are on vacation at this point. I can't get a hold of them. I mean, these are some pretty amazing um, validations of, the tr of the, what looks like a true call, a real call, because, wow, they're getting a lot of information right. So it's important to sort of have somebody at the ready to be able to contact and say, something's going on. I don't know if I believe this. Um, I have it happen to me as, as an investment advisor, but also just as a, a, a son. And, um, you know, I, I periodically get emails from people that, that say, this doesn't seem right. Is this, is this wrong? You know, it's just another person to check with. So you need to kind of have your roster of people. But the family emergency one is um, particularly, you can see that the commonality of all of it is fear, 
This one here, however, is especially the current older generation, they want to help. They're, na they're tr trusting to a degree. Um, you know, my generation and younger, they, they, gr they are growing up in a very, very skeptical world. Um, that may not have been the case for people who are 80, 85, 90 years old. Um, trust was something that I think was a bit stronger. And so that's kind of carried you through your life in many ways and positive, with positive uh, um, outcomes. But in this case, that trust is being preyed upon. So the family emergency scam is one to be very, very cognizant of. And this is the last one that I'm going to talk about. It's called the online romance scam. And you saw from that earlier slide the person who had $400,000 taken from them. Well, that was because they bought into this idea that somebody was interested in them romantically. They're, they're feeling lonely at home. Um, they're, they feel like, you know, it's, it's a, a connection with the world. And so they begin to develop a relationship with someone that they simply don't know. And it all seems good but then it builds from there. So I'd like to show you this video. Looking for love in all the right places? Like popular dating sites, mobile apps, and social networking sites? Ron seems like a perfect match for you. He's thoughtful and says he can't live without you. He says he's from the U.S. but works out of the country. He says he wants to visit but says he can't afford it. He asks you to send him money. Last month, it was medical bills for his sick aunt. This month, he needs money to fix his car. Next month, who knows? Ron wants your money. Don't send it. The person pretending to be Ron is a scammer. He'll tell you anything to get you to wire cash right away. He'll never run out of excuses. If an online love interest asks you for money, walk away, no matter how compelling the story. Report scams at ftc.gov slash imposters. So that one is really sad. <laughs> to have people feel that lonely, um, be sucked into a, a scam bit by bit by bit. And it's right, the, the, the ask begins to build, and then at some point it becomes you know, a much larger dollar amount. And by that point, you're embarrassed that you ever fell for it. So I, I read a statistic that said one out of every 44 scams perpetrated on seniors gets reported. One out of 44. So it's almost impossible to see how big a problem this is from official statistics. Um, and the reason that they're not reported is because, well, either the person who's been scammed is ha has had some cognitive impairment, so it's really not easy for them to report. But B, it's embarrassment. It's, it's a feeling that they've lost control of their ability to, to manage their own lives. And, and once that happens, um, you fear what the ramifications might be and what, how your loved ones will view your ability to live independently. And so now you're talking about being removed from your home and all the things that you've built and become accustomed to in your life. So I think that the idea of not reporting it is built on a whole nother set of dominoes falling. And so you just hide it and you just chalk it up to a bad experience. And um, that isn't the right thing to do on many levels. One is if you're, if you're prone to making this kind of mistake, then you need to have people know about it to be able to build safety nets within your life to avoid the next one. And two, you've got friends who are going through the exact same thing in your community, and you wanna make sure that the perpetrators are stopped and that, that people are not falling for it just like you did. So you have a community responsibility too, I think, to report it. So let's talk about some solutions they're really basic solutions. I mean, I, I don't have a magic bullet on stopping this. Um, my personal effort really through the money series here is to make it so that people are aware of these things. And I've, I, I said it three years ago and I, I'll, I'll say it again. I, my, my view is that if one person sees this program and, and it stops one fraud, then it was massively successful. And I think that's the way we all have to think about it. So I would, I would encourage you after this, when the program is put up online, um, I, I will send out you know, videos to people on the list so that you actually can see the video. Share it with people because it might save one person from making one small mistake, but it also might save one person from making a very large mistake as we saw in those earlier examples. So these are four, 
four things that I want to talk about, um, pretty basic things, but they're pretty important. The first one is I want people to start to think about finding a trusted contact or a trusted person in their life that they can almost have as, um, what was that game show where you could call like a lifeline and ask, the, a ask somebody to answer the question for you on the game show? I think we all need to have somebody on the other end of that, of that line that we can say, I, something's not right. I'm, I'm a little confused. I don't know what's going on, but I'm, I think I'm getting sucked into something here. But I'm scared. Call that person. I don't care who it is. Um, I don't care if it's someone at the senior center that works here. I don't care if it's a grandson or a daughter or a daughter-in-law or a brother or a sister or a financial advisor or your lawyer, find somebody that you can call and just have them on the line. And it might be more than one person. It might be someone who handles just your tech issues. So you never have to deal with that scam. Um, but you need to pick somebody as a trusted contact. Okay, that's, that's my first uh, small solution. Number two is I think that it's important to think about your banking structure a little bit as you age to try to limit the potential damage that can occur. And there are a couple of things that you can think about doing. One is having a low bank balance that you have ready access to. Don't put all your money in one bank account and have simple access to that for a scammer to potentially draw, 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 draw from your account. Um, limit the damage that can happen. So. In my two cases that I, I highlighted in people in my life, thank God they were only $1,000 to $2,000 mistakes. Um, I, it, at the time, it, it scared me that it, it could have been 10000 It could have been 20000 What would have stopped it from becoming a much larger problem? Well, one thing is to make sure that your bank balance isn't even big enough to be able to draw too much out. Okay? So... The other, the other thing is that you can go and talk to your bank about adding people to your account, at least for viewing purposes. So it's almost like the trusted contact idea, but have somebody who can monitor your banking. Your job is to recognize your own vulnerability and to figure out who can be helping you to monitor those, those bank transactions a little bit more closely. Um, sounds a little bit intrusive, but we all know what the point of it is. Um, number, number three here is increasingly, and I just read an article on this, it looks like telephone companies, AT&T, Verizon, cell phone companies, are actually now able to create robocall filtering. So I would encourage you to call uh, your, your cellular service provider and ask to have some sort of resources put on your phone uh, or overlaid within your phone, phone service to stop robocalls from happening. Now, it's not going to be fail, a, a, a foolproof system, but to limit the number of penetrations into your life of a potential scammer, this would help in that way. There are apps that you can actually subscribe to on your phone that will block robocalls or do a good job of identifying robocalls. But keep in mind, the spoofing of the caller ID um, is, is still a prevalent issue, so you need to be still you're quite vigilant. You know, a very simple rule of thumb is don't answer a telephone call from someone that you don't know. I know that sounds like closed off in the world, but it is probably the most uh, fail-safe way of not getting a robocall is to not answer the phone. So, and then, then the last one is a catch-all for everything, and, it, and I, I, I mentioned it in the context of the Senior Center. I think it's important for you to stay connected to people and for people to stay connected to you. So really this one's more for your loved ones, your younger loved ones, to stay connected to the older generation. Call them, talk to them, keep in contact, keep in personal contact because it's the way to find out what's going on in their lives. It's going to be more a, 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 a more... Um, open way of hearing about the scams as they're building. It's a chance for your loved one to be able to express themselves, con you know, concerns that they're having regarding a telephone call they got or a pop-up on their, on their computer. So staying in contact with your loved ones is another big um, blanket solution. 
So I also want to highlight a couple other things here that I, I, I find fantastic and didn't exist. At least I didn't know they existed three years ago when I gave this talk the first time. That, that AARP actually has a uh, fraud watch network that they've developed. And I'm putting the 800 number up on here, 877-908-3360. Um, again, this will be available online, so you can actually come back and grab this slide if you'd like. Um, and I want to play a video to show you what they do and how they came to be um, and why I think it's such a wonderful, wonderful asset. Scammers don't care who they target, as long as you will agree to send them money. Any of us can be targeted by scammers, but it doesn't mean we can't fight back. Vigilance is our number one weapon. Hi, my name is Lynn. I'm with AARP Fraud Watch Network. Since I've been here, I believe I've handled a couple thousand calls. It feels really good to help someone spot and avoid a scam. Many of the callers that call in, especially if they're victims, feel embarrassed or ashamed. I appreciate so much that you call and recorded this. This is a judgment-free zone. Call us on the helpline. We are here for you. So that service from AARP is staffed by volunteers. I called them this morning and talked with somebody. Um, and I asked the question, did you have to be an AARP member to use this, this hotline? And the answer is no. Anyone can call. And the great thing about it is they are trained by federal uh, um, uh, authorities. Uh, in addition to that, they report everything to the government. And that's an important thing for us to remember is that the feedback loop reporting these types of things, going to FTC.gov, Federal Trade Commission, and reporting the scam that's happening is a way for the government to spot it happening around the country and to alert people. And that brings me to uh, the, the next slide. We actually have in our area, this is relatively new, I believe, uh, Grand Traverse County, which is really what the Senior Center is a part of, um, there is a fraud alert system that, that is a scam alert system that allows you to register your phone number, your email address. Um, I was told, I, I think this is true, that, that recently the newsletter for the Senior Center actually highlighted this which is fantastic. So you can actually register your information. You're going to get scam alerts of things that are actually happening in our region. And for yourself to know what's going on, where you're seeing these scam alerts listed down below. But in addition to that, you can take that information and make sure you mention it to your friends. This is the way to stop fraud and scams in their tracks. So I suggest that everybody goes to grandtravers.org and clicks on Senior centers and you'll see those scam alert along the left hand side and you can actually uh, register your information right in there. I've done it and um, I'm looking forward to getting scam alerts so that we can stop this stuff from happening. And so with that um, I want to thank a, a, f a few people or a few organizations. Um, first off this could not be done without the generosity and support and openness of the Senior Center. Um, for you guys to be able to get this type of programming is wonderful and I know that the programming goes well beyond the money series here so I'm proud to to be a part of the Senior Center's programming um, uh, uh, repertoire. So the Senior Center I want to thank everybody here. In addition to that we've got Leland Township Library so that is a second venue of the money series. If anyone's ever been out to the Meineke room out in Leland they've got a fantastic um, facility out there and a really great program director. Um, she came to me a couple seasons ago and asked if I would come out to do programs for the Money Series out in Leland and of course the answer was yes. And it's a nice intimate setting and, and I hope that it, it, it provides a resource for Leland County as well. Um, third, I'd like to thank the Tra Travers Area District Library. They, the, their facility over there, their, that venue is a fantastic room, um, the McGuire Room. 
The great thing about that, that uh, facility, in addition to the fact that the library is a fantastic asset for our community, is that we actually have those videotaped um, live. And we're doing four programs over, over there this year um, where we take video, the video of the money series and replay that on, on, on um, TV as well. Which brings me to the fourth organization that, that I think is a hidden community asset, which is Travers Area Community Media. It used to be called Up North TV, Up North Media. They've changed their name to Travers Area Community uh, Media, and they have a couple different channels that are open access channels. But one of them is their community TV channel, channel 189, on your cable system. So you subscribe to Charter, you will be getting access to channel 189. That's where they're replaying every week, multiple times, the growing library of Money Series videos. And so I, I want to thank them as well for being um, supportive of the Money Series and for being such a great uh, piece of access for, for the community in terms of information. Um, I always say to people, I, at least I'm, I, I want to say to people, that of course these organizations in no way are endorsing the money series or the content or the speakers. Um, you know, we are all professionals who know our stuff and we speak for ourselves. But it, that without the cooperation of these venue uh, providers and program, um, program directors, we would not have the reach that we have. So. I want to thank them uh, for that. And so I, I look forward to answering any questions you have and for you to attend all the future Money Series programs for the rest of the season.